Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome uh, Bells of Joy from Messiah Lutheran Church, uh, blessing us from above today. Uh, blessing us from below with us today is Reverend Dr. Lee Hagan, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri, Dis- uh, Missouri Synod, Missouri District. Uh, he's been with us before uh, a couple times a year to worship. He lives nearby, but usually spends his time on the road. We're privileged to have him bring us God's word this first Sunday in Lent. Um, Lent has begun with Ash Wednesday uh, last week. We'll continue with our midweek services at 3.30 and 7 p.m. If for some reason you were unable to begin your Lenten journey last week, we invite you to take that up in the coming week. And then just a couple announcements about what's going on after church today. We do have a voters meeting immediately following the second service in the lower level. Uh, That should be a quick meeting. Its sole purpose is to issue a call, hopefully, to uh, two prospective teachers. Um, We uh, have a few staff vacancies, and we're trying to fill those. We've got some great candidates, so we hope you'll go down there so we can have a quorum and get the church's business done. Uh, Finally, tonight at 6 p.m., a Music at Zion event, Symphony Orchestra will be here. Um, It'll be a nice take on a Sunday evening for you, your wife, your family to come and listen to some uh, professional music. Please stand, greet one another with God's peace, and remain standing with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, a merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. 
And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. We pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this first Sunday in Lent comes from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat from the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. The serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you gave to me with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all the beasts of the field. 
On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life, thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face. You shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if any died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by that grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. The free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. 
For judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Remain standing. friends. It is awesome to see so many faces in God's house this morning. 
So we are in a new church season. It's the season of Lent, right? Lent is a time for us to remember the grace that was poured out for us by Jesus on the cross. And there's a song we can sing to remind us about, to remind us what Lent is all about. The song is called Amazing Grace. The word grace reminds us that our salvation in Jesus is a gift. It is free. It is nothing we have done to earn or deserve. Jesus did it all by living a perfect life and taking our place on the cross for our sins so that we might live forever with him in heaven. Pretty amazing. So we're gonna invite the congregation to sing the first verse with us, but before, oh, I'm gonna need you, oh, I'm gonna need your hands because we're gonna do some sign language. So I'm gonna need your help with that. Okay, so before we invite the congregation to sing, I'm going to try to teach you how to sign the song. So you guys get, get ready. So this is gonna be quiet, but with a lot of hand motions, right? Right? Okay, so first of all, amazing. It's like raise the roof, amazing. Grace one hand around the other. So amazing grace. How, so act like you're, how? Sweet, like sugar on your lips, sweet. The sound, like pulling something out of your ear. Okay, we'll do that part. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That, is like that, that, Saved, okay, saved is my favorite. Saved is your hands crossed and then break free. That saved a wretch. Okay, wretch is kind of a funny word. That's another word for sinner. Okay, so sin is like this in person. So sinner who saved a wretch like me. Okay. I have a cheat sheet and that took me a couple of days. So I don't expect that we're gonna get this. <laughs> but you can always YouTube it for a tutorial. So the words are gonna be on the screen for the congregation. And Mr. Telke is gonna help us with the piano. Thank you, Mr. Telke. And we will invite the congregation to sing this with us. Maybe we might be a little slower, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, ready? Here we go. Good job. So next week in the children's message, we will talk about the next verse and we'll learn it as we go along in the season of Lent. All right, let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Jesus, fill us with your grace in this season of Lent and let us be amazed every day that our salvation is found only in you, free of charge. By grace we are saved. Amen. All right, thanks so much for coming up. The acolytes have a handout for you. You can return to your seats.
be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We focus our attention on the words of the Old Testament reading for today from Genesis chapter 3. Just a couple of verses after the Old Testament reading, the chapter ends. And here's the situation. Adam and Eve are banished from the garden. Sin has made everything corrupted. What God had made to be good is now a mess. The ground is cursed. They will bring, Eve will bring forth children in pain. Working the ground will be painful. And as we were reminded on Wednesday, they were made from dust, and to dust they will return, meaning death has entered the world. It's like the worst country song ever, because everybody's dog is going to die in this scenario. It's a dark and gloomy situation for Adam and Eve but for all who will follow after them. Welcome to church, everyone. <laughs> but for us as the people of God, even in Genesis chapter 3, we see hope. Now, dear friends in Christ, all around us are people who know only darkness and gloom. They know only pain and suffering. They are enslaved by their appetites and they, they search and search and search but find no hope for being set free. They live each day in their own personal prisons where there's no sign of deliverance, where there's no hope. Adam and Eve had fallen into sin. Everything was broken. All of God's creation was now tainted by sin. It had fractured all relationships, even the relationship of the Creator with His wayward children. And as Adam and Eve realize it, as people live in this fallen world and see all of the effects on God's creation, it would lead so many to despair. But for us, as the people of God, for us, with the eyes of faith, we see the hope that God promises right here in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 is one of those key chapters in all of the Bible. This chapter sets the stage for everything that will follow, but we get these... See these threads that God will weave throughout the entire story of salvation. You see, you don't understand the birth of Christ without Genesis chapter 3. You certainly don't understand his passion, his suffering and death. You don't understand his resurrection. And you also don't get the visions of heaven that John sees in Revelation without the understanding of Genesis chapter 3. On this first Sunday in Lent, though the alleluias have been buried and the hymns of praise have been placed on pause, there is still reason for hope and it is found throughout the story of the fall. Though Adam and Eve had fallen prey to Satan's temptations, as they doubted God's word to be true, our Lord Jesus Christ does not. The temptation account in Genesis 3 is paired with the temptation account of our Lord in Matthew 4. Because our Lord Jesus Christ doesn't doubt God's word. He lives by it. There, he, our Lord is tempted in the wilderness for 40 days by Satan. And each time that Satan tempts him, he rebukes him precisely with the word of God. The word of God is in his ears and it is in his heart and it is on his lips. 
even when Jesus hangs upon the cross, even there, the ultimate place of darkness and despair, there is still hope because our Lord speaks God's word. He recites and prays Psalm 22. How often we have doubted God's word to be true, but Jesus always believes. He always confesses, and he lives by that word. So there is, as Adam and Eve fall prey to temptation in the garden, it foreshadows our Lord in the garden of Gethsemane, bowing his head in prayer and submitting his will to the Father's, praying, not my will, but thy will be done. Here, as Adam and Eve fall into temptation, we're pointed forward to our Lord, who doesn't yield, but who trusts God. When the eyes of Adam and Eve are opened, open to their sin, they recognize their shame and their nakedness, and they try to hide, they try to cover it. But when God finds them, he does not leave them covered in their shame and their makeshift loincloths. Instead, he is the one who covers them. Who covers their sin and their shame with his gifts, his merciful gifts. He covers them with animal skin, pointing us forward to the fact that we also have been covered. Our sin and our shame has been covered by Christ Jesus. In the waters of holy baptism, we have put on Christ the robe of righteousness, the garment of salvation, to cover over all of our sin and shame. The real practice in baptism, many families have baptismal gowns or they will dress their child at the time of their baptism in all in white. The practice, and we know why this doesn't happen because of mothers, but the practice was that children were naked in that cold drafty room and then the water was poured upon them and then they put on the white gown. Well, while we don't do it that way, the symbolism is still there. That that's what God does for us. He clothes us with Jesus. He clothes us with his righteousness, his perfection. That he kept the law fully where Adam and Eve did not. He kept the law fully where we have failed. And in our baptism, we put on our Savior. But the most clear message of hope in Genesis 3, in this account of the fall, is the promise that one of Eve's own offspring would come to crush the serpent's head. It's considered the first messianic prophecy in the Old Testament, pointing us forward to the babe of Bethlehem, the Christ of Calvary. In St. Luke's genealogy, he traces our Lord's line all the way back to Adam to show us that he is the fulfillment. He is the one who had come to crush the serpent's head. That was his sole purpose, to defeat the enemies of sin, death, and even the power of the devil. Genesis 3 doesn't leave us in despair. It doesn't leave us in doubt, but it points us forward to Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah, who would come to crush Satan's head by his death, by his rising again from the grave. He has defeated Satan, and he has opened for us the way to everlasting life. It's all there. 
It's all right there in Genesis 3. And in fact, the Old Testament, it's the constant theme we find throughout, pointing us to what God accomplished for Adam and Eve and all who would follow after them through the promised Messiah. His innocent suffering and death, his glorious resurrection from the grave. This is the plan of salvation that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And it will ultimately mean this, that when our Lord Jesus Christ returns in glory, that paradise will be restored, that we will once again enter into that beautiful garden where we will have access to the tree of life. And there will be no separation between God and his beloved children. This is what the scriptures are all about from Genesis to Revelation. It all comes together in Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, Jesus says of the Old Testament scriptures, they testify about me. That's what Zion Lutheran Church is all about as well. That's what Zion Lutheran School is all about. That every person that walks through the doors of your church, of your early childhood center, of your school building, that every person who interacts with Zion members and staff, that they will be pointed to Jesus. To know that in a world where there seems only gloom and despair, there is hope. And it is hope in the one who has conquered Satan, who has conquered sin and death for us. That's why this congregation exists. It's why your school exists. It's why we have a Lutheran high school. It's why we have a university even in California, and they need it there. It's why we proclaim Jesus Christ in everything we do, in every song that is sung, in every school lesson. It's why the faith is what we integrate into our LSAM tournament teams, our kids that travel off for the weekend. It's not just about basketball. It's about a life formed and shaped in Christ. A life lived in response to the hope that we have in Him. And dear friends in Christ, for years as a parish pastor, I saw it where I served. I saw it in the congregation that I served and in the Lutheran school that I was a part of. But now I have this great job where I get to travel all across Missouri. And you know what's the same? What's the same in Bolivar and Forsyth? What's the same in St. Joseph and Kennett? Whether it's a huge congregation or a really small one, is the message remains the same. It's the same message that is proclaimed every Sunday morning and other days and evenings during the week. It's a message about Jesus. They testify about me, the scriptures, but also our congregations and our school ministries. You are a part of 289 other congregations and 104 other school ministries that proclaim that same message. This morning, this gospel message is being announced in 12 different languages across our district in Missouri. That's what is announced to young adults at our district campus ministries and our military outreach to Fort Leonard Wood and Whiteman Air Force Base. This is the same message that is being proclaimed to Ethiopian immigrants in Kansas City and college students at Missouri State. It's what is proclaimed at a new church plant in Ozark and in all the ministries all across the state. We have a mission field in Missouri of three million souls. Six million total, but three million who are outside of the faith. 
who live in that darkness, that gloom, that despair, who need a message of hope. And dear friends, that's what the message of Jesus Christ is. A message of hope. So, dear friends, we've got work to do. You've got work to do here at Zion. We've got work to do across Missouri as we proclaim the message of hope in our Savior, Christ Jesus. Our prayer is that everything we do would be a part of that thread of proclaiming Jesus Christ, Him crucified, him risen again from the grave. Him conquering sin, death, and the power of the devil for us all. May God bless your Lenten journey. May God bless Zion church and school family. And may Jesus Christ always be the center of everything that happens here. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, please stand and join me as we confess our faith, confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look forward in the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you saw Adam and Eve in the garden and called them to repentance. Seek us when we wander from your holy word. Give us contrite hearts to confess our sins and receive your forgiveness and restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, your son trampled the serpent underfoot and freed us from sin and death by his own death on the cross. Protect and preserve all who are called to preach Christ and Him crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have established earthly authority to punish evil and to praise those who do good. Grant our rulers humble hearts to resist the allure of power and to worship you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to suffer temptation for our sake. Strengthen us when we are tempted, and teach us to rely on every word that proceeds from your mouth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, send your holy angels to protect and keep us in your ways, that no evil may befall us. Graciously behold the needy, the sick, and the troubled, especially Jerry, Rich, Marge, Christine, Brent, and Juanita. Give strength to Lisa and Alan and those we name in our hearts. Satisfy us with the length of days you would give us and show us your mercy and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you covered the shame of our first parents with the animal skin and thereby foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of the shedding of your son's blood by which we would be both cleansed and clothed. Give us the garments of a repentant faith that we may receive your son's body and blood for our forgiveness this day, which covers all our sins. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be seated. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared to joyfully celebrate this Paschal feast in sincerity and in truth. Therefore, with angels and with archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he broke it, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. In the same manner also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We ask you in your mercy to strengthen our faith in you and help us fervently love one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.